tonight, tonight, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna go and we're gonna talk and teach out of Proverbs, the 12th chapter. Uh, the subject of our teaching tonight is going to be being immovable, staying steadfast in the Lord. As you know, Proverbs were, were, were written by, by Solomon, the third king of Israel, who, 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 who was a, as a young man, asked God to give him wisdom to be able to uh, lead his people. Because he only acts for wisdom, God gave him wisdom. What what the what the uh, subject of the twelfth the twelfth chapter of Proverbs it talks about being immovable. The Bible talks about security in the in the word of God, which means being established. The Hebrew word suggests that it means standing firm being prepared, being ready to face any situation, and refusing to compromise. This, this stability allows us to be confident regardless of what is happening. But how do we achieve this security, this confidence? Many people feel that they will be secured if they become successful to have accumulated wealth or achieved fame. To achieve these things, some develop devious plans or form alliances with people who may be considered as being unprincipled. Others think that they are justified uh, in anything to attain their goal. But the Bible warns us that will not they will not be established by wickedness. Wickedness is not the answer. What is the root condition of security? The root condition of security is righteousness. This means this means concentrating on doing what is right in the sight of God. As we obey God and please him we can we can be free from being shaken, being slipping, uh, 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 and being and having instability. Then we will be unmovable. To achieve the stability, we need to be anchored in God's word. We need to trust Him. Be driven by the passion to serve God. Be sensitive to his spirit, to be concerned about eternal things. Be dedicated to working and good works in God's kingdom. This 12th chapter of, of Proverbs, starting at the first verse, it reads, Whosoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but who hates correction is stupid. Sometimes God leads you backwards to take you forward. No matter how hard the lesson, the lesson is to learn, do not despise the Lord's instruction. We look at that in the perils of Joseph and what he went through uh, to uh, be the one who God picked uh, to go before his people to Egypt so that uh, they would continue to be a, a tribe and then later on to be a nation. The difficult past Path is always meant for your good. 
I remember in the military, uh, I, I always wanted uh, to be exceptional as as a as a as a army soldier. The reason for that is that I knew that that I would be going to uh, Vietnam, and I wanted to be in the best condition that I could be in. Therefore, I decided that I would go and join the Airborne. It was a it was a, a grueling uh, test for stability, and it really you really had to be physically fit in order to be able to uh, pass the Airborne test. We we ran everywhere that we went. We ran the breakfast, we ran the lunch, we ran to training, we ran back from training, we just ran. And 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 I knew that the bottom line that if I if I passed and was successful in getting my airborne wing, that uh I would be physically fit for whatever I I would have been a I would have to do when I uh, was just deployed to Vietnam. The Lord disciplined the child that he loves. Just as a father disciplined the child that he delights, godly parents don't withhold loving discipline from their children. Uh, the more the more you love in fact, the more you correct what is wrong and train them into what is right. To endure the hard time that they're going through, that they're going to go through, they need to be prepared to accept to accept the challenges of life. And we need to make sure that they are ready to take their rightful place in society. For the one who finds wisdom will be truly happy. Why? Because nothing of value in this world is more profitable or precious than wisdom. What do you desire in this world? Whatever it is, it doesn't compare to what wisdom offers you. Godly wisdom. Money can't buy life. It can't buy peace. Neither can it buy happiness. But wisdom can deliver them all. Let's look at verse number two. One who is good obtains favor from God, but he condemns a person who schemes. No one can be made secure by wickedness, but the root of the righteous is unmovable. But Solomon is saying here that no one can be made secure by being wicked. But the root of the righteous is unmovable. In other words, no schemes or plans of the wicked will succeed. Nor will they give them safety and security. The righteous, on the other hand, need not to worry about securing themselves are establishing a support system. Their roots go deep because their roots are secured in the Lord. That that is something that we need to always remember as we study the word of God, as we do the word of God, as we live a righteous life, we are secured in Christ. That means that we don't we don't have to worry about being uh wicked. We don't have to worry about getting all you can and can and all you get and then sitting on the can. We know that we know that with God we are more than secure. In our, in, in our endeavors in life. In all thy ways, as we acknowledge him, 
God will direct our path. Now let's look at verse number four. A wise, a wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a wife who causes shame is like rottenness to his bones. Now, this is Solomon talking. This, I'm not, <laughs> these are the words of Solomon. And what I'm only doing is rightly dividing what it is that Solomon, the wisest man that supposedly that ever lived, was saying in this verse. It said that the wife of having noble character is her husband's crown. Her husband is proud of her and lets her know of it. But on the other hand, a wife who causes shame is like rottenness in her husband's bone. Even if a man is healthy and is fit, a shameful wife makes makes him miserable on the inside. Moving right along to verse number five. The thoughts of the righteous are just, but guidance from the wicked is deceitful. At conversion, at us accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and becoming a Christian, we receive a new man, the man of Christ. First Corinthians 2.16 states that once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are now a, a, a new creature. All things are passed away, and lo, all things now becomes new. But too many believers slump into their old ways of thinking. Instead, we must be in tune with the Spirit of God so that our thoughts are always just, are always righteous, are always guided by the word of God. Righteous living can only proceed from righteous thinking. That is why that we have to have the mind of Christ and that we are not to lean to our own understanding, that we are to follow the letter of the word of God. And then not only will we be successful in life, but we will have men to look at us and try to mimic who we are because we are in Christ. Now, verse number six. It says that the words of the wicked are a deadly ambush, but the speech of the upright rescues them. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Uh, it is it is a reminder that growing Growing up in Christ means using our tongue to refresh others. That that goes against the natural human heart and requires the power of the spirit. Regardless of how much we shoot off our mouth and say, but I just can't help it, we can control our tongue. We need, as, as Christians, we need to watch what we say, watch what we do, 
and to be guided that our words should be used greatly to edify and not to tear down. We are to be holy because our God is holy. And that and that that means that we are to be set aside. We we are we are to be someone who if they're on their jobs that 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 we don't we don't gossip. We don't uh uh carry ourselves in a manner that uh would be uh a disgrace to, to God. We are to be the type of person that everyone goes comes to because we have wisdom, godly wisdom coming out of our mouth. And that not only do we talk the talk, but we also walk our talk. Let's look at this verse number seven. The wicked are overthrown and perish, but the house of the righteous will stand. This proverb calls to mind the parable of Jesus and the two builders in, in Matthew uh, 20, in Matthew 7, verses 24 through 29. It talks about that he, these two builders, one was building his house on a firm foundation, and the other one was building him on the shaky foundation of sand, the shifting foundation. The house of the righteous was stand because everything that the righteous do is built on a foundation of trusting in God. They do everything are revealed to them through God's word. By contrast, the wicked are overthrown because their lives are built on a foundation of shifting sand. Their choices and their decisions are nothing, are nothing uh, but substance that bags that up. Instead of building the firm foundation, which is on on the word of God and seeking God's kingdom, they they build their 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 house and their life on things that are that are shifting. During during the times that we are living in, it is greatly necessary that we now look toward God to lead and guide every step of the way of our lives so that so that we may be able to stand and to stand firm because during these times and we're certainly living in the final days that that everything that will shake our core is going is going to come against us. And unless we stand firm in the word of God, that we keep our hands in God's hands and and, and not allow things to prevent us from holding on to God's unchanging hand. As we I don't know how many of you got an opportunity to uh look at the debate last night. I I, I was I was totally embarrassed for our president because I tell you, uh four more years of our uh, of that president, uh I don't know about you, but um I don't know how he would where he would lead us. Uh but my faith is in God. And not in that who the president is, and 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 what happened. I'm secure in my faith in God, and I try to make sure that I'm doing what it is that 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 God wants me to do. 
and that because of that, I am secure in my faith, knowing knowing that John 3.16 is what I stand on, and that uh, always to ask God to steady my steps and to alter my steps in his word. I don't know about you, but I'm going to always follow God's word. What If it does not line up with the word of God, then it is not something that I would follow. Once it lines up with God's word, we have peace. We have peace that surpasses all understanding because God's peace is the peace that's unshakable and unmovable. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you again for for this opportunity to study your word. We thank you, Lord God, for this expectation moment every night, Lord God, that we have. And as we were told by the pastor that uh, we're coming up on 200 days of our expectation moment. And, Lord, we thank you. Lord God, for those who find comfort and peace in the word every night, Lord God, we thank you, the Heavenly Father, that this man of God, the pastor of St. Peter, wanted to uh, encourage not only the people of St. Peter, but all those who join us on the line each night to hear your word, to walk in your word, to study your word, and then, Lord God, to meditate on your word so that that during these days of uncertainty, Lord God, we would always have a certain word from you. We praise you, the Heavenly Father, and we lift you up, Lord God. We thank you for all of those who, John, Join us on the expectation moment line, both on Zoom and on the compass line, God. Build them up, Lord God, where they may be torn down. Prop them up on every lean and sign. Let them know, Lord God, that you are an ever-present help in the time of trouble and that the joy of the Lord is their strength. These are all blessings we ask. In your mighty name, Lord God, in your name we pray. We say amen, amen, and thank God. Go in love, peace, and joy, for the author of love, peace, and joy go with you. Have a good night. You may... Amen. 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 Amen.